Welcome back to the Simple Farmhouse Life podcast. Today, I am so excited to bring on Angel from at Angel Rose Turner over on Instagram to talk about dairy cows. I get a lot of questions on just the logistics of keeping a dairy cow. If someone on a small farm can do it, if you need a lot of acreage, what do you feed them? Is it something that is going to require so much of your attention that you can never leave your house again? So she and I are just going to have a conversation about that, about some of the things that we've learned, stories that we both have from keeping cows and all of the learning experiences that go along with that. Plus, if you need a large farm to have one, spoiler alert, you don't. She and I both have pretty small farms, pretty small pastures. She actually feeds her cow hay year round. So anyways, let's dive into the conversation and I hope that you learn a ton. My name is Lisa, mother of seven and creator of the blog and YouTube channel Farmhouse on Boone. Join me as I share with you my love for creating a handmade home from scratch cooking and a little mom and entrepreneur life along the way. Yeah, so thanks for joining me and I get a lot of questions and just curiosity about having a dairy cow, not necessarily everybody even wants to have one, just how it all works. Right. Some people just even want to understand how it works so that whenever they're finding a local farm to get dairy from, just the whole process is really interesting. And so yeah, I thought it'd be fun to have an episode dedicated to it. I did when we first got our cow, but I've obviously, since we've been milking now for eight months, I've learned a lot Oh, wow. A lot of things. Yeah, it's amazing. We actually got our first dairy cow last May. Okay. And since then, we went through 15. um, And it wasn't so much that I was buying them to keep. Once we got Maggie, I started buying them and breaking them and then matching them up with families. Oh, But it's been a very interesting journey. That is. Wow, you have a lot to share then about this. (laughs) Yeah. So we enjoy it. You just had cows that you basically, were they, were they, um, like a heifer so that they had only had one calf and they were a little bit wild or what's your yes. story there? Very wild. Okay. So uh, the reason I got into breaking cows was because when I got Maggie, the man was like, she is so broke to milk. When you come get her, you can field milk her. And I went and got her and we drove four and a half hours to pick her up. And it was very apparent when I picked her up that she had never been milked before. Oh. And I was like, you know, we're already here. So we're, getting her. we're just going to have to get her. Um, so we brought her home. She had a calf on her. Um, and I highly re- recommend that. If you're getting a cow for the first time, I would definitely, you know, make sure you have a calf mm-hmm. because it's nice in case, you know, you're unsure of what you're doing. You have the calf to milk the cow no matter right. what. Yeah. But we brought Maggie home and she was not broke. And it was... I was terrified because I had never even been around cows okay. before. I just knew I wanted to do right. it, <laughs> but I had no previous, I, like I've always had chickens and yeah. you know, all that. I've had everything, but not, not cows. a thousand pound. Animal. Um, no, no. And I was like, so intimidated, like watching her walk around the yard. I'm like, this is crazy. Like I have to milk her. And, um, it was just a process. It was really interesting. First two weeks, I cried a lot, mm-hmm. <laughs> but we did it. And I ended up breaking her through a series of rope tying her legs. Um, I would tie the front legs forward and then the back legs, I would hobble them. Okay. And it basically broke her and trained her that, okay, when I'm in the milking stall, I don't move. And, and the cows, they're very, very receptive. So she learned very mm-hmm, quickly. Yep. It took about two weeks. Um, but after I did that, I was like, oh man, I love this. Yeah. Like I absolutely love this. Yeah. It's interesting so. once you're used to it and once your cow is used to the routine, how not big oh, yeah. of a deal all of it actually is. But there is that really intimidating learning yeah. curve. When we went and got ours, we drove, like you, we drove four hours. We went to um, Kansas in the southeastern part of Kansas. And she didn't really have a whole lot of information for me except for that she was bred, she was AI'd and that she should be bred. And she, you know, that was it. Whether or not she'd been milked before, she was just a nurse cow. And so I really wasn't sure what to expect. And whenever we got her off the trailer at our house, she literally knocked me to the ground. She charged me and knocked me to the ground. (laughs) My husband got it on film, but we didn't put it on YouTube because uh, you know, right. It's just, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what kind of comments I would have gotten for that. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but she's uh, amazing it's now. amazing what happens with cows. Yeah. And I grew up around well, cows. Awesome. So I felt like I was pretty comfortable and knew my way around a cow, you know, like I grew up in 4-H and so yeah. we had to tame every year a steer for the fair. 
Oh, wow. But still, a thousand pound animal, it's always a little bit intimidating. They're all different. They're all different. I've went through 15 dairy cows and they, it amazes me that their personalities are all different. Especially, do you have a Jersey mm -hmm. or yeah, what do you have? Yeah, Jersey. Okay, you got yeah. a Jersey. The Jerseys are kind of spunkier. I yeah. Think. <laughs> They're a lot more personality. Yeah, <laughs> we have a Jersey okay. and then we have a Guernsey. And the Guernsey, is, she's just chill and laid back. And then my Jersey is just, she's wild. Yeah. She's something well, else. Well, when we first, so the first cow we brought onto our homestead was actually a Guernsey calf. So we got her at four months old. Oh, wow. And I halter broke her. And then later that fall, it was fall of 2020, my sister was having a wedding in our barn. And so we moved mm -hmm. the calf to my other sister's farm. So that way she wouldn't be in the stall or, you know, just around whenever we had all of these guests. And she she's really loud too. Like even people who don't have cows, just so you know, calves have this deep, some calves have this deep, yeah. loud, like yeah. they sound like a bull. And so we wanted to get her off of our property for the wedding. And when we did that, we sent her off to uh, my sister's farm. At the same time, I was like, you know what? I don't want to wait that long because I need to wait until she's about 18 months to breed her. So we're still looking at two years from milk yeah. right now. So I ended up leaving her there yeah. and getting a jersey that was already bred pretty much like the week after the wedding. And so that's who we have now. And the okay. Guernsey is at my sister's. She is now bred by my sister's Angus. Oh, wow. And so my sister will be milking her uh, later this fall. But I just wanted to that's get like ahead. I'm like, we're we're about a year and a half. We'll, we'll have been milking over a year once yeah. she's finally ready. So I'm like, I don't really want to wait that long. And so I'm glad we took that step. But people always are asking me like, what happened yeah. to your Guernsey? I'm like, she's tame as can be. I halter broke her, but I didn't think about how long that process would be. <laughs> it is a long process. Yeah. I've always wanted milk cows, but it took a while for my husband because like you say, it's a very intimidating thing. Like you, you just don't know what to expect. And we, neither of us have ever been around cows. Yeah. So it took him a while, but finally we started looking. It took about eight months and we were going to get a baby mm -hmm. yeah. little calf. And then I was like, you know what? That's, that's just going to take yeah, so long. Like, I don't know why that's that was a long process. It just sounded maybe less intimidating. But then after I, I had her all halter, we're like, okay, now we, now yeah. we wait, you know, like, a year and a half yeah. before we have milk. This yeah. A long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. That's, um, we started getting like, I would just get little heifers that had just had their calves and break them for families. And I wanted to gain experience because I have plans in the future, um, for different things, but I wanted to get as much experience as possible with milk cows. And it's crazy when you start going through them, there's so many different things you learn just by like, uh, for example, when I first started buying the cows, I would just go pick them up, you know, whatever. Now, when I go pick up a milk cow, I can't stress it enough to people. If they're, if that cow is in milk, take a mastitis test with oh, you okay. because that is one thing I learned the hard mm. way. I went and picked up a cow, brought her home and I started milking her and I'm like, wait a second. She's, she's got mastitis. Okay. And so now every time I, I get a client, I'm like, make sure that you take a mastitis test with you when you go buy that cow, if it's a milk, okay. um, because that's something you don't want to end up so with. So what do you do? Do you just milk her out a little bit and then like dip it in? I have no clue what a mastitis test, how it works. Okay. So a mastitis test is like a little piece okay. of paper and it will have four dots and you basically just go milk each quarter just a little okay. bit on each of those little oh. dots and it will turn, um, most of them will turn blue oh. if it's got mastitis and it's a very simple thing, yeah. but you want to make sure you do that because I bought this cow and brought it home and I was like, Oh my word, you know, that's just a whole can of worms. You don't, yeah, open. I, we never had to deal with it in, well, so far ever. And so I'm curious what yeah. the process yeah. is like, like, how do you deal with a mastitis? It's, it was a long yeah. process. <laughs> it, it honestly took me forever to get that cow cleared up. When you milk a cow, you know, you have to milk them all out unless they're your calf sharing. Um, but if that cow has mastitis, you have to strip every last okay. drop wait a couple minutes and then strip it again. And then, um, we did a series of, there's something called dynamite. Okay. I cannot say how amazing that stuff is. It's basically essential oils in a cream and you rub it all over the udders and that goes in and fights the infection. Um, and then you have to use antibiotics if you can't clear it up. And this, this girl, I had the hardest time clearing up. We finally did get her cleared up, but you just don't want yeah. mastitis. Like you do not want your cow to have that. It's a very hard thing yeah. to deal with. And to prevent it from happening, what are some of the tips that you have if someone does, you know, have a first freshened? So if you, if you don't want your cow to get mastitis, make sure that you milk them every day on time. Okay. 
and, and you milk them out completely. It's very, and clean. Cleanliness is super important. You want to make sure that you're keeping your cow clean. Um, you're cleaning them before you milk them. And then after you milk them, obviously you want to do the iodine dip. Um, if you keep your cow clean and you keep your cow milked out on time, it's very simple to prevent it. Um, but once it sets in, it's not simple anymore. It's a very hard process okay. to get through. Yeah, that's something I definitely want to avoid. When our cow first freshened, her milk for a little while tasted salty. And we were told oh, yeah. maybe that was a sign of mastitis, but it never, I mean, it just cleared up after about a week or two. It didn't taste salty anymore. And we've never had any trouble since okay. then. But yeah, it was. That's yeah. awesome. So we didn't have to do anything, but. That's actually super common. It's usually like a very acute case of mastitis when you see that coming on and salt does mean mastitis yeah. usually. Um, but if she, if she was just, if she had just freshened more than likely, she just had a very, very cute yeah. case of it where usually that will just clear up on yeah. its own. Maggie had the same problem when I got her. Okay. So tell us about your cow Maggie and how many calves she's had. You could tell us about your farm too. How much property? I think some people think, okay. oh, I want to have a dairy cow, but maybe do I have enough property? What do I need for this? Okay. Well, interestingly enough, we don't have a lot of land for a cow. I have to feed my cow year round okay. um, because we just, our farm, for the longest time, we thought we had 15 acres because that's what was zoned. And come to find out, we've only been farming on 10 acres. Okay. And it's not farmable land. We've had to literally work it really, really hard. It's mostly hills and trees. And we've just had to clear out just enough spot for the cows. Um, and then we've taken it up into the forest as well. But we have to feed year round because we simply do not have the space for them. Maggie is, she's had one calf and we're actually working to get her bread right now um, because it's about that time for her. But she's, when I first got her, she was just so wild. And I was honestly, like, I almost sold her a few times because she was so just, she'd get excited. She'd run at me. Like, I didn't know if she was being aggressive. Um, but then the craziest thing happened. I bought my Guernsey and I bought my Guernsey last November and brought her home. And the Guernsey is very respectful, very calm, very sweet, but she sees me as the herd leader. Oh. And Maggie is, Maggie's below Aiden. Aiden is her herd leader. So where Maggie has seen Aiden respecting me, Maggie gives me the utmost respect now. It's amazing. It's very crazy. Like they fall in line with their herd leaders. Yeah. And so, they're very, very routine. Yeah, very. Oh my goodness. If I am not down there to milk Maggie at the certain time where we only milk Maggie once a day mm -hmm. because she's a low producer. Um, so we only milk her once a day, but if I'm not down there right at the same time, it throws everything off. She won't even come into the stall. If I'm like 15 minutes late, she won't come into the stall. She'll throw a fit. Like it's, we have to stay on routine and it sounds intimidating, but it's really not because it just becomes a part of your daily routine. Yeah, you know, it does. And so does she still have a calf or is the calf long since weaned? Oh, yeah. No. Okay. No, no, no. We, so we wean at seven months. Okay. I find that to be the sweet spot for our cows. Um, so we weaned her at seven months and we were actually going to get her bread back immediately, but we had trouble with our AI guy. Um, so we're, we've been kind of in a pickle with that. So now as, as of next week, someone's going to be just bringing a bull because to be honest with you, I thought getting someone out to AI would be easy and it has been a nightmare. Okay. So <laughs> that's something that people don't think about. Well, the whole, the whole breeding thing is a whole thing. And I want there to be some secret solution that's really easy because my friend had trouble with AI. And so she bought a Jersey oh. bull. And since she lives nearby to me, I borrowed her Jersey bull and we had him for two months. But that was quite the experience. So I don't know if you ever had a bull. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I have. And I sold him very quickly. Say, I don't know how <laughs> very, long you're planning quickly, on keeping especially him. Especially Jersey. I'm scared of Jersey bulls. I'm scared of Jersey I'm bulls. I find them meaner them. than any other so bull. So we had I a don't Jersey bull at our, on our farm for two months. He ripped gates off hinges. He took his water and hid it in the woods. He got out at night yeah. because he ripped gates off hinges and we had to get him out in the middle, like when it was dark outside. Um, wow. It was very interesting. So, uh, yeah, that's a whole yeah. thing. That's pretty typical for Jersey yeah. Bulls. I We sold ours because they just, once they hit a certain age, there's really no helping them. Um, I've heard they're the meanest bulls of, of all the cow yeah. breeds. So actually. I was pretty convinced based on right. all the dairy cow research I've done that he was going to kill me or my husband. So we were very careful with yeah. him. But 
Yeah. It yeah. was a very interesting experience. So what kind of bowl are you going to get then for your, for Maggie? So honestly, I wanted a Jersey just because I wanted it to be a purebred, but I'm too scared to bring a yeah. Jersey back onto the property. Yep. So, um, we're looking at, my friend has a Guernsey bull. And so I was going to see if they could bring him okay. over. Um, so they're supposed to actually deliver him next week. So I'm, I'm excited. I, I don't know how Are you going to keep go. him for one month or just month. hope that it happens in, or I'm going to keep month. him okay. for a month. Um, just because we try to track her, but it's really hard. So I'm, I'm like, you know what? I just don't want to worry about it. So we're just going to bring him for a Let month and then, yeah. yeah. So yeah, see what happens. So that's what, what my thought was. We ended up keeping him too, because I was like, I really want to make sure because of all the hassle of yes. getting a bull and yes. bringing the bull back. But we still don't know because we got him in November and we just haven't, I haven't had a vet out to see if it worked or not, but I'm really hoping because I've heard a lot of AI non-success stories. And so I'm a little bit worried about how that all is going to work, but tell me a little bit more about your weaning process because our calf is, let's see, she was born in June. So I know I need to wean her, but for those of you who don't know, if you don't have a calf on the cow, then you have to milk no matter what, whether you're out of town, anything, because the cow will get mastitis if they, you know, they're producing milk and nothing's taking it. Whereas my thought with keeping the calf on, even though she's so old is we could, and here's the thing, we've never gone out of town at all. And so you sound like (laughs) that, you know, but theoretically we could leave if we wanted to, but I don't know at what point I'm new to this. So I don't know at what point you know, what point do you just have to wean them? Um, I mean, honestly, they get to a point to where the moms will wean them themselves. I I find it easier to wean them when they're seven months or, you know, f- between five and seven months kind of seems to be the sweet spot. And I just do it cold turkey. And it's hard for about a week. But after that, you know, they're totally fine. So I just separate them, basically. Okay. Yeah. At that point, do you then milk twice a day? Uh, so yeah, that's what I did with Maggie. We, we took the little calf off of her and, um, we paddled the nose. You know what I'm talking about? Where you put the little paddle Uh in their nose. Okay. So there's like a little clip and you can actually just stick. It doesn't hurt the cow or anything. It's not uncomfortable. They just don't like it because they cannot nurse. If you do not have the setup to separate your cows, you can get a nose paddle and it just goes right into the calf's nose. So when the calf goes to suck, it can't because there's that little paddle right there and it keeps oh, them. Okay. So you don't have to, you don't even have to um, separate them, which is really nice. I separated mine just because we had the little spot. We had like a little paddock for them, but um, we did bring in one calf and I actually paddled her nose. It's very simple, but Maggie, I milked her twice a day for two weeks. And then I started okay. slowly. I did a very slow process, even though Maggie's not a high producer, I did not want mastitis setting up. So we just right. started yeah. slowly bringing those hours closer and closer. And then finally we just, um, went to one day and I seen, I would just check to see how full her bag was. She did great. Yeah. Like she had no trouble. I, I would be very weary of milking a high producer once a day. Right. I, I, I tried that with one of the cows I was um, breaking for a friend and I just didn't feel comfortable with it. So we went back to two, two times a day. So when you say a low producer, what, what do you mean? Like what would be, so for us, I think, I think my Jersey is probably a low producer. She raises her calf and then we get a gallon a day. Yeah. That's yeah. It. That's so, perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. Maggie is between a gallon and then a gallon and a half in one milking. And then two okay. milkings obviously would be three gallons a day. I, I think anything above four gallons would be a high producer. Okay. We've never had that, but then she has always been raising her calf. And I know that she nurses a lot, even though she's like yeah. eight months old. That's awesome <laughs> that you're even getting there. milk though. Do you separate them? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We separate at night. So yeah, we have a little, okay. a little pin where they just are separated by uh, a um, cattle panel. And yeah. at first they, she nursed through it. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, because we'd be like, why wow, is there no milk? That's crazy. And then it turns out she milks through it. And then the cow started holding milk back. And so we actually have to have the calf pull down the milk every milk. Oh, wow. I've heard of that. I've never seen it, but I've heard of it. Do you get cream at all? Only when we do that. So I didn't wow. discover it for a while. It She just kept declining. I'm like, why are we getting a quart of milk? This is like milking a goat. And then one day, I forget what happened. I think the calf accidentally somehow got to her. And then I was like, oh no. And I pulled her away and I was like, oh my goodness, her balloon just filled. 
And so then that was the routine. It was yeah. like a balloon. It was like completely empty. And then all of a sudden full. So like, she's not. Is that not yeah, crazy? She wouldn't let it down for us. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I've heard of that. I've never seen it myself, but I've heard of that. Yeah. So I don't even know whenever we do wean her, what we'll do about that. I, and we plan to keep her because she is female. And I want to, because I want, in order to not have to worry about this whole um, AI bull thing, yeah. that's so annoying. It is. I'm thinking what we'll do is we'll every other, and I'll send one off to my sister's farm for a season Yeah. and then bring it back. And then that way I don't have to worry about that. That's why so. we got two. That was the whole point of us getting reason. two cows. Um, yeah. Like I said, I, it was really hard to get my husband on the train at first, just because he was like, I don't want you overwhelmed. You know, we've got a lot going on at homeschool, all that. And then once we got it, we were like, hey, we got this. Like, this is nothing. Yeah. Um. So then he was like, hey, let's get another one. I was like, wow, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. My husband's the same. He didn't grow up on a farm or anything like that. And uh, it was my job completely because it was my idea yeah. up until I had my baby. And then I was inside, you know, for my two weeks postpartum, just nursing, laying in bed. Oh, yeah. And he started milking. And then it was cold. And long story short, I haven't gotten gone back to milking yet. So it's Are you serious? Like That's awesome. Thing. Yeah. It's, I'm thinking in the summer, whenever I put him on my back, I will go yeah. back to it. Yeah. But right now, yeah, that's it's like all my husband. So I I really want it to be my kid's job completely at some point, but mm -hmm. I'm still at the point where I'm like, I don't know how well you'd get it done. And we def definitely don't want mastitis. So yeah. I need to start transitioning more into that being something that they do. But yeah, so far. Right now with it being winter and everything, we're still getting yeah. our, getting familiar with all of this, but I think I, I think I understand how it all works. The breeding thing is still oh, a little iffy for me. I don't think that gets <laughs> easier for anybody, honestly. Like that's yeah. just been the drama on our place was getting the cow bred. I'm like, this is never going to happen. I, I, yeah. I still have Maggie and she's not bred and she calved last May. So I've, I, I'm in a time crunch. <laughs> right. Yeah. And for those who don't know how it works, usually you'll, you want them bred back every year. So you yeah. want them at about three months after having the calf bred back. And then it's a yearly cycle where they are in milk for 10 months. You wean them about two months before they calve. Mm -hmm. So that way they have a chance to recover and then repeat, repeat, repeat. And so yeah. the process really, I mean, it's a, it's going to be a constant issue, which is why the idea of having two really is great for me, which we have them because we have June, who's our, our cow and then her calf ginger. They're both female. They're both Jersey. And so okay. I think they'll just rotate yeah, being yeah. bred and going off to my sister's farm or my friend's farm or whoever has a bull. I don't want a bull anymore. Yeah. I, I, so. I don't either. I mean, if we had more land and it was further back, but yeah. I don't want one near my house at all. Not where my yeah. kids could just like get in there. They scare me. I'm so scared but, of yeah. bulls. That's just it. My friend and my sister, they both have a lot more property. They're more set up. We're a very small operation. We have seven acres. And like you, it's very wooded, hilly. We feed hay pretty much okay. year round too. Okay. So yeah, I mean, we so can be way page. less in the summer. Yeah, yeah. Our whole property is fenced in. And so what you can find on seven acres of woods is there. But yeah. um, it, there's a lot that we need to do. We've only been here three years. So there's just not okay. a whole lot of pasture. So they definitely have to be fed. Ours is just, I mean, there may be, I, I can't, I couldn't even say comfortably, but honestly, most of our land is like straight up a hill and it's all wooded. So it's yeah, like, I, I, I was even like, okay, maybe I can put pigs here, but the pigs would literally roll down the hill because it's yeah. my husband's <laughs> like, there's no way we can do this. But you yeah. know, you, you learn to work with what you have. And I feel like people feel like they have to go out and buy this fairy tale farm with all this mm -hmm. acreage and you just right. don't have to. I have friends yeah. that are literally farming on three acres and it's incredible yeah. what they're doing. Yeah. I follow people on Instagram who have two acres and have a full blown farm just by the way they set it up very intentionally. I yeah. forget what book it was, but there was, oh, it's something about self-sufficiency, but there's layouts for each amount of acres. So if you have a one acre farm and then there's a layout for where you put the fruit trees, where you put the pigs yeah, and like yeah. the garden, and then it goes up through, I think like 20 acres, but it has a layout for each. Now, when I looked at it, I'm like, well, if we had just like a flat five acres with no hills or woods, I would lay it out like that, but ours is yeah. a lot more variables to it. But the yeah. idea is, yeah, that you don't, you really don't have to have this huge farm to have some of these things no. that you want. No, my brother, he had one acre, I think, and they were growing. I mean, he had every bit of that. 
covered and and he had his gardens and all these different (laughs) places. He had his chickens and he, it worked for them. Um, and it was incredible. Like I would go over there and I, and he was literally on a hill, like not one yeah. acre flat spot. It was a one acre oh, wow. shell hill and he right. had turned it all into a garden. And it was, it looked like the garden of Eden. It was beautiful. I yeah, was like, how did yeah. you do this? <laughs> yeah. Just a lot of creativity. Did he put boxes like in the hill going up the hill? Yeah. Okay. So he took pallets and he shelled okay. the pallets out and he put the pallets in the ground. And then he started getting like chicken manure from my mom's and different things and just filling it through the winter. Um, Mm -hmm. and he made a beautiful little walkway all the way around that place. And it was, I can't even describe how beautiful it was. It was an incredible garden on a hill. And people were just like, how did he do that? It was amazing. But you work with what you have. He he had one acre. Yeah. Yeah, And so he just did it. I mean, I've told that to my husband a lot because there's times when I want to look for more property. I'm like, well, maybe we could find somewhere around here. And I even have a search going right now on realtor.com of- Same girl. You know, over, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I have a very specific search. I want a house over 120 (laughs) plus acres. Yeah. And it's in my search and it never comes up because when it does, it's $3 million here right now. Exactly. Exactly. So- it's not happening anytime soon, but I'm always like, oh, I need more property. And I'm like, wait, we haven't even tamed our seven acres. Not mm-hmm. even close. Yeah. Like we have not utilized, even honestly, we lived on a quarter acre before. I'm like, we still could have done more there than, I mean, yeah. not that I wanted to stay there, but there's always more you can do with what you have, probably almost no matter what, until you're utilizing yeah. every square inch. There's, you know, if buying a bigger farm's out of the question, there's definitely ways to make yeah. what you have work. Especially in today's market, unless you just find a gold mine, it's you're not going to be finding, you know, pro- I, we've been looking for property. And yeah. It's just been a crazy yeah. thing. But um, I feel like people feel like they have to have a lot of pasture to get a dairy cow and you can feed. It's very, very easy to feed them year round. Um, what we do with Maggie is in the summer, we'll move her to a smaller paddock. We break everything up into tiny paddocks and then we'll move her to a smaller, you know, another paddock and let her grace that down and then move her back. And we just kind of go back and forth and kind of do that dance during the spring, summer and fall. But then on the winter, she's, you know, you don't even have to worry about that anyways. In like a smaller area. Well, we, we, it was part of our daily routine every day to milk and then bring them out to the pasture and then repeat at night we bring them in and then you know yeah and lately Luke's like do I even need to bring them out there I'm like no there's nothing yeah, nothing no. left for them at all no just give them hay so have you made any local contacts for hay or how are you able to that get all of that that's been another struggle because last year I don't know how it was for you guys but it was yeah, really really hard there was a hay shortage here um because we had the droughts and stuff so mm-hmm. that was that was very hard to find the hay. I ended up finding a man. Um, I wasn't as happy with the hay as I would have been if it would have, it, it just had some like rambles and different things in it. So I really had to give the girls extra. Um, I got some like seaweed salt licks and different things like that, just to make sure they were getting all those minerals. Sometimes you have to get creative and there was just nothing else we could do. And then we ended up finding a Mennonite farmer. He had everything that we needed. So we, thankfully we ended up going and getting everything from him, oh, perfect. but we worked with what we had for a little while there because everything was sold out. We didn't have a choice. Um, so I'm planning ahead this year yeah. because I'm like, I am not, I don't want last year happening again. You learn, you just, the whole thing is a journey. Like you learn yeah. the whole time. So. Yeah, you do. And worst case scenario, we haven't had to do this yet, but you could, you could just go get grain. You know, like if you, before yeah. they're going to starve to death. <laughs> we had to grain feed during, um, like during milking and stuff like that. We grain feed, but we had yeah, to we do, do that. Too. We had to do that no matter what, because. Yeah, if you the, can't find hay. The hay was not, we were not happy with the hay. And I have friends that only, they exclusively grain feed um, because okay. they had a hard time last year finding hay. So you just, you get creative. Do you have storage on your property no, for, for hay? No. Like a large amount? We, we, no? st- yeah. we, again, we got creative. We stuck pallets on the ground. And then we put the hay on top of the pallets and then we put a big, um, like cover over that just to keep it. And it, it was fine. It worked great. We didn't need a barn. We don't have a big barn. My husband, um, built a little bitty pallet, like a little pallet milking barn for me. So, and he had never built anything in his life and he was like, okay, let's do this. And he did great. It turned out amazing and it, it suits its purpose, you know? Yeah. You learn so many things just out of necessity by doing Absolutely. things like this. And I'm totally a person of like, I'm going to just get the dairy cow and then figure out the details later, you know, because I'm okay. going to be forced. <laughs> yes. Literally we went and got Maggie and my brother and Gabe were putting up 
the milk. Like we brought her home and I was like, oh wait, I forgot. I don't have like a milking stall. So we literally had to go and they built that that night. Yeah, it was crazy. And they were like, <laughs> I was like, I was not prepared for this, but you learn and then you end up getting it done. Well, you put things off whenever you don't have to do them, but whenever you're forced to, you just get it done that night. So for us, Real quick. our cow was supposed to be bred when we bought her. That's what we paid for. She was bred with sex semen, so it would be a female calf. Right. And um, the vet came out about a month later because she had an abscess. I think it might have been from transporting her. She maybe got a cut or something, but she had an abscess. Yeah. Yeah. And I had the vet check while she was there. And she said, I have her entire uterus in my hand. There's nothing in it. And I was like, great. So, <gasps> oh, <laughs> but, but hold on. She was wrong. <laughs> You're so, kidding me. So I sent her off. I sent my cow off to my friends to live with her bull for two months. After that, that came again, said, yep, she's two months along. So I'm like, cool. She'll have the calf in September. Well, one fine day in June, my daughter goes out to the barn, comes back in. She's like, mom, when was June oh. supposed to have her calf? I was like, September. She's like, yeah, no. <laughs> so oh my word. we had to build a milk stanchion like the next night because I thought we, we had till September to worry about right. it. Turns out right. she really was bred by the original. It was, oh she's a word. half Brahma, half Jersey female calf, just like she was supposed to be because we bought her from an exotic cattle co down in kansas so i'm like yeah that's crazy was, yeah so it was definitely like okay that's we gotta crazy. figure this out some friends of ours who i met through youtube because they have a youtube channel um mm -hmm. they came over because they have a dairy cow and helped us build it and it was just like a fun night and it was no big deal yeah and that's how we did it yeah we we me and me and anna made supper and then we let the kids yeah. all play outside exactly. and our husbands put up the mat but that's yeah. how my life is with farming Same. like literally you just have to make it work it is because curveballs happen. Like all of a sudden the goats are out. Okay. What do we got to do to get the fence more secure? Yeah. There, a lot of times, yeah, there's no warning, but it's got to <laughs> figure it out. Yeah. See, we've been homesteading like very low key for the last 10 years since we got married, but the last five years have been the major learning curves. Cause that's where we started getting more animals, bigger animals. And it's just been a learning process, major, major learning process. Yeah. So what other animals do you have on your farm? So we have lots and lots of chickens. I free range my chickens. So I'm like the lady that when people are done with their chickens in the, like, hey. in the fall yeah. and they don't want to have them in the winter, they're like, okay, we've got like 15. Yeah. I'm like, bring them over. That's fine. My husband's like, every time I pull up, there's like 20 yeah. more chickens on this farm. <laughs> but we've got chickens. We've got ducks. Um, I really like running different animals together just because it keeps down disease. Okay. Um, like if you run chickens and you run um, rabbits or ducks, whatever, the disease has, like on the ground, it has a harder time uh, manifesting. Oh. So it's actually better to integrate your animals. Okay. Um, of course, it's not true with all of them, but we also have, we have sheep, we have, we've had goats, but honestly, I don't love goats. I don't love having goats. Same. We got rid of ours uh, too. Uh, I was like, after we got the dairy cow, I'm like, why do we? Exactly. <laughs> That's what we did. We got, once we got Maggie, I was like, well, I think, it, I think it's time for the goats to go. They just, they kept getting out and causing trouble. And there was yes, just, they exactly. didn't, they didn't, they weren't giving, they weren't giving anything to the farm. So I was like, you know what? We're just going to have to get rid of them. But yeah, I'm trying to think I've got a turkey, but I have a pet turkey. We got him for um. Thanksgiving and then we fell in love with him because he literally uh -oh. was like so sweet and they're like the kids were like you Aww. we can't eat Mr. Thanksgiving mom I'm like oh great so now he's uh, like so his name is still Mr. It's Thanksgiving. Still Mr. Thanksgiving and he roams around the farm <laughs> and he's like our watchdog when people pull up he goes to their door and won't let them out and they're like scared because they're like there's there's a oh. turkey they'll call me and be like hey there's a turkey like that's in your top. front yard I'm like yeah it's fine I'll, I'll come beware of turkey yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. We just, we go through tons of animals just because I'm trying to learn as much as I can right now. Um, because we have plans of going bigger, but we're just kind of waiting on God's timing basically. So, yeah. So you are, you are actively looking for some yes. way to expand. Yes. Yeah. 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 Very much Who so. Who if the market will go down? <laughs> I know. I know. And we're like, you know what? I mean, if it's the Lord's will for us to find a place now, we will. But like you said, you go on, it's like $3 million if you're looking for a hundred yeah. acres. Crazy. Well, and I don't even want a hundred acres. I just want a house over a hundred years old and I want um twenty plus acres. Yeah. Is that too much to ask? I, that's Apparently me. That's me. I look like we'll find places and I'm like, but it doesn't have the hundred year old house. And Gabe's like, Angel, I, I just don't think we're gonna find that right now. I'm like, we will it matters. We will. It matters <laughs> yeah. and we will find it. Yep. 
Well, and I already have, in a way, I already have a dream, like my dream property. Just it could have more acreage, but other than that, it isn't. So I have to find something better to want to move, which means exactly. it has to be, you know. Exactly. So I just recently, my husband said, oh, a friend of mine said that the place across the street sold. And I was like, you are kidding me. I've been wanting it forever. I oh, didn't know it was word. for sale. I think it sold without being listed. I should have knocked on their oh. door, but it's a lot of acreage in an old house and it's just across <gasps> and I wouldn't have even moved. Oh my goodness. We would have just ran cattle over there. But anyways, I was like, oh, yeah. no, no. <laughs> that's the stuff that you'd rather not have known about you i know? go i don't want to talk about this anymore yeah. <laughs> he's like well maybe it'll come up again i'm like yeah well it just did somebody just got excited about it, and uh, it. i had no idea that's like a really hard thing like we've been looking and it's really hard because you'll get your hopes up over things and then it doesn't yeah. happen and you're like oh my goodness like this is a really hard process trying to find something else yeah but like we mentioned we have so much to yeah. do so yeah. much to do we could put berries out back and grapevines and there's just so much that we have not taken advantage of here and so yeah it's it's important to be you know grounded where you are and you know thankful for where you are in your journey because I mean you'll get there eventually one of these days but it is important to be excited about where you are now right oh yeah yeah I am we have so much so much potential here with our place so probably the most common question I get from people is about expense so is it worth it? Um. <laughs> okay, so absolutely, I feel like it's worth it. It Once we got a milk cow, we'll never go back. We will never be, but you just have to kind of learn. I don't feel like it's super expensive. It, I guess it just kind of depends on your situation. If you have fields mm-hmm. that you can hay, then you're, you know, you're set. But obviously, if you don't, you're going to have to go buy the hay. You're going to have to find the 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 grain if you're going to feed them during milking. That was something that was getting really expensive for us was the grain. And then we found a really sweet farmer um, out by my mom's and we buy it by the ton and it's not that expensive for us. So that's been something that's been really, really helpful. Sometimes you just have to get creative. It, it can get expensive, but we do a lot of... Um, like we treat our animals ourselves. I really don't call the vet out a whole awful lot. But if you're one of those people that you're you're wanting to have the vet out for everything, they, it's going to get expensive really, really quick. Well, yeah. And probably at first you will. But like, for example, with that abscess, I now would know how to do that. Yes. Yes. But I didn't know at first. Now I'm like, okay, she literally, I mean, it's disgusting, but I saw how she did it. And it really, it was not like a super medical process, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Like, you pretty, learn. Like, pretty it, straightforward. I, I agree. Yeah. I think it's more expensive in the beginning because you're learning and you have to, like, you have to just kind of make everything work, but you will learn how to treat your animals. You'll learn how to take care of them. Um, I'm really, I'm not saying I'm grateful for the cow that I got that had mastitis, but I learned how to treat it myself after that. So yeah. that was that was a good thing. You learn, you learn a lot of different things. So it does get expensive um, in the beginning, I, especially I believe, but you, you learn to make it work. And honestly, like everybody has a different budget and you just learn to kind of budget around it. If, if it's something that you find worth it, I think having a dairy cow is 100% worth it. Yeah. For having the fresh raw milk, just the benefits that it has for my family yeah. is definitely worth it. And I think too, with the economics of having a cow, I think we forget or some people forget to think about the calf that's produced every year. Yeah. So yes, maybe if you're just thinking about how much you're feeding the cow and then like how much per gallon it's costing, it might be costing five or six dollars a gallon to produce the milk. But right now we have a very valuable female calf that if we were to sell would cover a lot of that. Yeah. So I haven't completely ran the numbers to be honest with you, but I do think the economics, I know that there are people who do um, I don't yeah. know if you have the keeping a family cow yeah. book. Oh yeah, yeah, I but do. She have talks, that one. yeah, that kind of stuff. And so I know the economics do work out, especially if you are smart about sourcing and learning things. Yeah, yeah. but it's going to be different. It's going to be different yeah. for everyone based on your property and what you know. And but like you said, once you start having the calves, you can break even or make. You can eventually like I'm making money off Maggie now because you know. Um, we've learned how, or not making money, but we're, it's not really costing us anything because we've learned how to budget everything out. Um, but in the beginning it was expensive, but once you start having calves, then it's just, you know, it's, it's, you sell the calf and then it pays kind of pays for itself. So yeah. And the infrastructure is a little bit expensive at first, but that's an investment. Yeah, it really is. It's a, it's an investment. 
But are you doing, since you're doing the paddocks, are you setting up like electric fencing paddocks? Not yet. No, Maggie, Maggie's very respectful. We're lucky. Our cows are respectful of, I can put a rope through the paddocks and she won't cross it. Um, now I know that's not true with all cows, especially I, I had one that she would just go through six strains of barbed wire. We could not keep her in anything. Like her name was Calamity Jane and she was very true to that. We just couldn't yeah. keep her. So we had to call her, but there, there's always going to be a cow like that. But our girls are pretty respectful. We've got, you know, barbed wire and then we kind of just section that off and they'll stay wherever we want them. Yeah. So, so that wasn't super expensive to start with. And yeah. I've heard, um, like I've watched a lot of Joel Salatin stuff where they do the wire fencing or not the wire. I'm sorry, the electric fencing. So I, yeah. it seems like pretty, pretty cheap to do that kind of a setup. Oh yeah. Yeah. We, we kind of went all in because we wanted to, we knew we'd want to keep having animals. And also I, where we live, I really wanted fencing for the safety of my kids. Yeah. So we just fenced the whole place in, which was way, way expensive, but it wouldn't have been necessary just for the cow. It was, it was a multiple, like several reasons why we wanted to do that. Yeah. But you wouldn't have to go and do all of that. So have you found any local people that could help you if you guys wanted to go on vacation? That's another p- thing people are wor- really worried about being tied down. Um, How have you managed that? To be honest with you, I'm not the right person to ask for that. We don't go on vacation. We don't go out of town. Like we Neither enjoy we. being home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We just same, do. We same. enjoy being home. So uh, I, I'm not the right person to ask about that. Now, I do have friends and that live in town, and they actually will get people. Um, what they do is they go find people at milk shares that know how to handle the animals, and they will have them come over. Okay. And the, because they're more than happy to come over and get free milk while they're gone on vacation. Right. But I would just worry about you got to make sure you find someone that's responsible again, that's going to be on time and milking your cow yeah. correctly every day. So I, I haven't had to worry about that. I feel like that's a lot of the reason why people calf share, because then you can go on vacation. You have that freedom. Right, right. Yeah. As long as you have a calf to milk them out, especially if they're not a super high producer, because some you have to, no matter calf on or not, you need to still milk them. Right, right. But yeah, we're we're actually planning our first vacation since having a cow this summer. Actually, we went on one last summer, but it was, yeah, we we totally did. We had family do it. So my sister, she has animals too, and so we'll trade off. But making farm connections like that, she doesn't know how to milk a cow or anything, but I could learn, you know, I can teach her. Besides right now, she's yeah. not in a super high production part of her milking cycle. So that that's another thing too, Yeah, is if you did, if you have a dairy cow and you're on the right cycle, which you're supposed to be, there should be two months where they're off every year anyway. And that's when you would plan things like yeah. vacation. If you calf share, you can do a weekend away. If you're a family that is super active and you're always leaving, probably dairy cow is not the right not the right no. choice for you. No, that's it's true. not. Yeah. <laughs> but there are ways to do, yeah, like minimal travel. Yeah. Most people that are homesteading aren't gone a lot anyway. So it usually ends up working out. But yeah, we we just don't go anywhere. Like we're we're not a traveling family. So yeah. Well, it's it's so hard. Like with kids, and then even if you have a dog, it's hard. Like that's yeah. our one of our hardest things yeah. is where well, the dog has to, you know, the it seems like the more intelligent an animal is, the more care yeah. that it needs. <laughs> yeah. We can't yeah, just true. leave the dog. We can leave the chickens. They'll be fine. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the dog needs human interaction. So kind yeah. of already used to that. So tell yeah. us more about what you share on your Instagram, where everybody can find you, what kind of things we can look for to learn more from you. Okay. So on Instagram, we do a lot of country cooking and just like a lot of basically what we're doing on the farm. Um, I sh- yeah. share a lot about our milk cow and our chickens and different things. Um, lots of just little tips here and there for homesteaders and different things like that. We're actually launching a website um, okay. tomorrow. So I'm really oh, excited nice. about that. And that's where we're going to be having all of our recipes. I had a hard time because I was trying to put recipes in my highlights and people are just having a hard time finding that. So I was like, you know, what? Yeah. it's time. I just need to go ahead and do it. So we're launching that. I'm excited. So that will be, will it be named after you? We're actually naming it after the farm. Um, Rose Hill Farm. You're the oh, first okay. one to hear that. So oh, cool. it's Rose Hill Farm. <laughs> and um, it's actually not really anything to do with the land there. It's my my grandpa that passed away. He went, my middle name is Rose. Okay. My daughter's name is Rose. So every time he would pull up and see us somewhere, he's like, there's my two roses on the hill. Oh, and so cool. everybody's like Rose Hill. That's yeah, perfect. That so is. we kind of did that. He passed away. So we did that for him. That's cool. So 
Yeah. We're excited. Yeah. Awesome. But yeah, at Angel Rose Turner on Instagram and then rosehillfarm.com yes. because I'm assuming once this comes out, if you're launching it tomorrow, like it'll be yeah. up. And- it'll be turn. It will, we had to put Turner in front of it because it, the Rose Hill was taken up, unfortunately. So we did Turner Rose Hill Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That happens a lot. So I'm excited. <laughs> But yeah, we just do a lot of basically all things homesteading on there. Awesome. So lots of lots of wild kids with dirty feet. <laughs> yeah, and it's a very, very beautiful account. I'm also inspired by a lot of your hairstyles on there. <laughs> I oh, need to thank try you. out some of your braids this summer. <laughs> That's definitely not every day there on our farm at all. <laughs> I know, but it's it's a pretty addition. Yeah, I love I love I grew up watching like Anne of Green Gables and stuff, and I loved seeing like the beautiful farm mm-hmm. scenes and then the whimsical dresses with the big hair. And I just can't get away from it. My husband's like, "Oh my goodness, Angel!" But I'm like, I, I I just like envision going down there and milking my cow in the field. It's beautiful. With, like, I, not that it actually happens. Not that it actually happens that way, but it's a nice thought. Well, it's <laughs> it's like art, you know. You capture yeah. A moment yes. that yeah it doesn't necessarily yes. have to be an everyday occurrence to be beautiful and admirable and something that somebody can appreciate so yeah, yeah. I totally love well, it well thank you <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me well thank there you there were so many it. more questions that we could have jumped into but yeah milk cow yeah. it's a lot it's a lot to get into well thank you yeah. I sure appreciate it all right well thank you so much for listening to this episode of the simple farmhouse life podcast be sure to check out Angel on her Instagram. And also I hope that you learned a lot about keeping a dairy cow and that this was a helpful conversation for you. As always, thank you so much for listening and I will see you in the next episode of the Simple Farmhouse Life podcast. Mm -hmm.